Right. So this is a, a very, very important concept in hard surface modeling with ZBrush. The smooth subdivisions and the crease level. And they're not in the same exact menu, but they're pretty close. So we'll go to geometry, and then this is in dynamic subdivision. So you can see I've got dynamic pulled out here. The hot key for this is Shift D and D. So Control D will add additional subdivisions. We don't want to do that, uh, at least not right now. We are basically previewing what the final geometry is going to look like. So Shift D takes it back to the low poly state and D will give you the subdivided, the dynamically subdivided state, which is again, just a preview. So what are these two settings here? So we've got the crease level, which lives here in the crease menu. Uh, where is it? I believe, let me just mouse over it right. So there's crease level. So you can do an automatic creasing by curvature and that's occasionally useful, but I almost always have to set it up manually like I did uh, in the last video. Crease level is going to be the number of times that we subdivide, dynamically subdivide the surface while respecting the creasing. So you can see that in the areas where there is, there's no crease, we're getting a little bit of a, a softness with each additional subdivision. It's sort of just uh, uh, interpolating between the surfaces. And the edges that are creased, they stay nice and sharp. And what happens is as you pack edges in closer to corners, those corners are going to be preserved. Uh, so let me see if I can, if I can find a, a simpler version. Well, may, maybe this will be sufficient. But basically what you want to do here is you want to, if you, you set crease level to 15, what that's, that's the default setting. What that means is you're going to have to subdivide your piece of geometry 15 times before it begins to ignore the crease and that's going to be like hundreds and millions of polygons so this is never going to be what you actually want to leave it at something closer to like two or three is more effective so what that means is we're going to preserve our creasing on these edges for three subdivisions and then we're going to ignore it we're just going to smooth it as the as we normally would but when you've added three here what that means is it's, it's subdivided this this one simple polygon three times which is not one a, a three time increase in polyfaces it's two to the power of three because each time we're 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 basically doubling the number of, of uh, faces with each subdivision so when we go ahead and i'm gonna tap the d key when we turn our smooth subdivisions up we get to three we're not going to see a change right and but you can see with it in, in these internal areas that's two subdivisions that's one subdivision that's zero so that's the default one subdivision, two subdivisions, three subdivisions, our edges are being preserved, or our creased edges, I mean. As soon as we go over our crease level, we're gonna to begin to smooth the entire mesh, ignoring whatever the creasing happens to be. So if I take this up to five, we start to get this, in my opinion, beautiful hard surface presentation here, right? Like it just looks really, really nice, all swoopy and organic and clean and lovely. There's a couple little problems over here. There's some stuff down here that could be potentially a little bit more defined. Whatever, that's totally fine because this geometry that's feeding into it is super simple. So I can just use, for instance, the move brush. Like if I wanted this area here to be more consistent, I can just move that vert. And you can totally work with uh, with Dynamic Sub D on if you want. I find it to be a little bit challenging sometimes because it's hard to know exactly where the geometry is, but the, the hot keys to toggle between the two modes are uh, D and Shift D. So I've got a little bit of an edge there I don't really want, so we'll go to Z Modeler. I'm going to turn the creasing off, and you can see it just instantly smooths out, which is really cool. So this, this dynamic subdivision here is an incredibly cool feature, very powerful, and uh, non-destructive, right? So you can hop back and forth and do whatever you want. If I wanted these faces in here to be planar, which I do, I'm going to hop out of dynamic subdivision, got the Z modeler brush active. I'm going to hit control W to put everything on one poly group. And I'm just going to highlight these guys, grab my select rect by holding control and shift. And then I'm going to click the, the vert I can get to the easiest. And then I'm going to invert if I need to. So what I want here is for this geometry to be planar. So I'm going to tap the W key, which is move. Yeah tap the F key so I can see where I'm at, click it. Once you've clicked it, it'll click on the surface. It'll, it'll go ahead and 
make that the center so you can just tap F and it should go where it needs to go. So I'm going to tap the Y key because what I want is, whoa, uh -oh, what's going on here? So W, I should be in, my, my transpose gizmo should be up somewhere. There we are. That's, that's what I was looking for, this guy down here. But I don't want to use this. I want to use, although this would probably work just fine, I want to use my, trans, my uh, transpose tool. So the other one is the transform gizmo. I think I used the wrong word. So I'm just going to click on the surface, which will draw the transpose line perpendicular to wherever it is that I click, which is very, very convenient. And then I'm going to go, so W is move. I think E is move, rotate. Yeah, E is rotate, and then R is scale. So once everything is scaled, I can just hold the shift key, and that the shift key will snap it to my little line here. And now that's all nice and planar. And doesn't that look nice? So that is that's the vast majority of what my hard surface process looks like. I do a very quick and dirty sculpt that just uh, gives me an idea of where my geometry is going to go. Sometimes it's more refined than this. Sometimes it's less. Depends on ultimately what I'm going to need. And then I just create a, a simple piece of geo like this using uh, retopology. And then once I've got this figured out, it's very easy to come in and add things like creased edges, you know, whatever, whatever the geometry needs, you can go ahead and, and start applying it. So that's, uh, that's something that I, I guess I could probably do a few more demos of because it is, it is pretty, pretty important. So maybe we'll just move on to the next piece and I'll, I'll show you a, a good trick for making two pieces line up with each other.